In this video, I will be showing you how to create a variable speed synth like the one in the buildup of Odessa's new track, The Last Goodbye. Here's a quick listen to what we will be creating. The first step is creating our synth sound. The focus of this video is not so much how to create the timbre of the specific synth in the Odessa song, but instead to demonstrate the tempo sync mechanics behind gradually and fluidly slowing down or speeding up any synth element of your choice. With that being said, to create a similar sound to the one on the Odessa track, I do have several tips. So inside of an instrument rack here, I have two instances of wavetable, and for this synth, you're going to want something between a square wave and a saw wave, but closer to a square wave. And the biggest key to replicating the timbre of the Odessa sound is in the filter and volume envelopes. I want this to be a short, plucky sound in both the filter envelope, which you can see here, and in the amplitude envelope, which you can see here. So short decay times, no real attack, and no sustain. I will also add some detuning to make the sound wider. And you can see this with my voices here. I have the unison set to noise, voices set to seven, and the amount set to 42%. Lastly, I've created a hard panned duplicate of this synthesizer. You can see I've it duplicated right here. One's panned all the way left, one's panned all the way right. And on the one that's panned to the right, um, the decay, there's a delay on it that delays it about 30 milliseconds. It's 37 milliseconds to be exact. So it hits 37 milliseconds slower than the left channel. And this is used to add stereo width to the sound and to further play into the variable speed effect. In terms of the effects I have on this synth, I have some EQing, which you can see here. And I also have a channel EQ to make it brighter. I have a saturator to make it more um, exciting and hit a little bit harder. And then I have some compression, some reverb, and some sidechain compression as well. Cool. But as I said, the main focus here is on the variable speed aspect to this synth. So once my synth is complete, we can move to the more important component of this sound design, the way that the synth changes speed over time. The primary tool we will be using to achieve this sound is the arpeggiator in Ableton. A very similar effect can be achieved with an LFO, but for this demonstration, we will be using the arpeggiator because of the way we can fine tune the volume and filter envelopes on the synths, as I just showed. So looking at the Odessa song, upon each chord hit, the arpeggiator starts very fast and slows down, as you can hear right here. So we will want to set the speed of our arpeggiator to be very fast in the beginning, as you can see right here, and slow down about halfway through each chord. The challenge here is to make our arpeggiator stay in sync with the BPM of the song while still having it change gradually. You might be asking yourself, why wouldn't we just automate the values synced up to the BPM? And to show you what that would look like, I'll open up a new arpeggiator here. So why wouldn't we just take our sync right here, have it synced up to the BPM, and change this over time? Well, this would save us some math calculations. Unfortunately, it prevents us from smoothly transitioning between different note lengths. It would instead jump right from eighth notes to 16th notes abruptly. And in order to achieve the Odessa effect, you need that transition to happen smoothly and gradually. So the first thing I want to do in my arpeggiator is I want to choose a chord trigger for my style. And this means that instead of playing one note at a time like most arpeggiators, it will trigger all of the notes in each chord at the very same time. And we can hear that here. Next, I need to convert millisecond values to match note lengths at our BPM in order to have the arpeggiator sync up to the song. So to do that, I'll turn sync off and change it to free. And now you can see my rate is measured in milliseconds. And we can hear how that changes the sound. So now our challenge is how do we sync these millisecond values up to 115 BPM, to our project BPM. So now it's time for the math. 
We are at 115 beats per minute here in this project, so there are 115 beats or quarter notes every 60 seconds. So we must ask ourselves, how many milliseconds are in one beat? Well, first we'll ask how many seconds are there in one beat? So to do this, I'll take uh, 60 seconds, there's 60 seconds in a minute, divide that by 115, which is our BPM, and that's gonna give me approximately 0.5217 seconds per beat. I can then multiply this by 100 to get the value in milliseconds, which is 521.7 milliseconds per beat. So one quarter note, if I wanted to make my arpeggiator here move at quarter notes, I could have it set to 521.7 milliseconds. And we can hear what that sounds like. Cool, and you can hear it's synced up to the BPM even when we're in the free mode. So now I can take this value and just divide it by two to get smaller and smaller note increments. And you can see I've done that all the way down to 64th notes. Now this can be a lot of work to go through um, every time you wanna do this synth. So there's also a handy website called musiccalculator.com. And this website allows you to input your BPM value, input the delay division value, and it will tell you what that measurement is in hertz, milliseconds, seconds, and a bunch of other metrics as well. So that's a quick shortcut for this um, technique. So once we know what these values are, we could just put them as automation points here in our automation lane. But that would take a lot of fine tuning, which can be kind of tricky. So I like to map the rate knob to a macro so that I can set minimum and maximum ranges that correspond to sync values. This will make the automation process much easier. So to do that, I'm going to click on my arpeggiator and put it into a group. Select this macros knob. Click map. Click the rate. And map it to my first macro right here. And you can see when I have this selected, I can click my left-hand menu here, and it's going to show me a list of all the macros that I have. And it is here that I can set minimum and maximum values. So in this case, the fastest I want our uh, synth to move is going to be 32.606 milliseconds, or a 64th note. So I can just type that in here and hit Enter. And then the slowest I'm going to want it to go is an eighth note. So that's 260.85. Once I have these values put in, this means that when my free rate knob is turned all the way down, it's going to be synced up to the project at eighth notes. And when I turn it all the way up, it's going to be synced up to the project at 64th notes. Lastly, I want to be sure that my gate value right here is set to a value below 100. The shorter the value, the shorter each note will be held out. So for example, if my speed is at 261 milliseconds and my gate is at 100%, each note will be held out for that whole 261 milliseconds. If it's at 50%, it would only be 130.5 milliseconds and so on and so forth. Values that are over 100% mean that notes will overlap with one another, which we do not want here. So now to create my automation. I want it to be starting fast and moving slow. So I'm going to place two uh, automation markers, starting at 32.6 milliseconds and ending at 261. And once I've done this, it's going to travel between these two. And whenever it hits the bottom here, it's going to be back in sync with the project. We can hear what this sounds like. And now I can just duplicate this for each chord. And there you go. Those are the core mechanics behind creating this sound and the way the speed changes over time. From there, you can use these tools on risers, pads, leads, or on any other sound you like. The possibilities are truly endless. My name is Everett Pearson, this is Point Blank, and thank you for watching.